Good afternoon, <coughs> distinguished ladies and gentlemen. And to you listen, my name is Javier Pellatos. Uh, I work for uh, Inos Deans on Sale, which is a joint venture between, between uh, a Spanish and uh, a Chinese company, okay? But we will act in this country as only one company, okay? Under the name Sunsail Technologies, okay? I would like, uh, I would like uh, firstly, to introduce our company, to introduce ourselves, and then uh, I've been told to talk about the solar field, okay? I will try to avoid to be so boring because this is a very bad time after lunch. And uh, I will try to avoid you sleeping in your chairs, so please. <clears throat> because the solar field is really boring, I promise you. You will have always only a few problems, but uh, you will have so many times the same problems if you don't take care of it, okay? But I'm not going to get into big details of it right now. Let's just start from the beginning, which is our company, okay? Our company, our company, as I told you from the beginning, uh, uh, Sunsail, will be focused especially in uh, solar field services, mm -hmm. from engineering to direction, procurement, commissioning, all of them, etc. But uh, we will also offer some different kind of services for, if you want, uh, for a whole solar, a thermal solar power plant, if you want, okay? <clears throat> Let's see, more or less, mm -hmm. A fast a overview of our company, okay? The company in the name, the official name is Focusing Solar Science and Technology Company Limited, okay? A, with a registered capital of a 10 million rand, a, sorry, a John, okay? Location, we are in Badaling, Economic Development Zone, and yeah? we are also in Spain, of course, I'm Spanish. And uh, the company's main business will, uh, is development and promotion of concentrated uh, solar power thermal application technologies, you will see, okay? And of course, as I told you, technical services will be solar field construction, which means and includes, of course, reaction, procurement, uh, commissioning, what's called EBC, and uh, O&M, hmm? of course, uh, audit, and any kind of uh, technical services related to thermal solar power plants, okay? <clears throat> development, uh, our technical team uh, is responsible to develop and promote uh, concentrated solar power and thermal application technology, okay? Uh, and uh, furthermore, at the end of this presentation, you will see our, uh, what I call the company star, which is the Sunsail Dish system. It's an innovation mm, in the, at this moment in the thermal solar market. Mm -hmm. uh, it is in development, it's not finished, but uh, we at Choir, we got the companies to uh, have the model Phoenix finished for, for next year, okay? <coughs> of course, technical service, full service, CSP, mm, construction, and uh, we are organizing a team of experts for the CSP Solar Field Service with integration of various advantage resources at local and abroad. We will start in the Chinese market, which is uh, now expanding. Mm -hmm. You know, now <laughs> here, uh, the thermal solar age was started in Spain and then expanded abroad, you know, mainly in Africa mm -hmm. and uh, 
some poets in the Persian Gulf and also in America, especially South America. And now <clears throat> uh, you are in the point of view for everybody. Now China will be the most important thermosolar market. So we will be focused here in China. Okay. Now you can see hmm, some of our uh, foreigners, some of our shares. And uh, well, this funny picture shows the moment we signed the agreement this morning, Mr. W. Line. Okay? Briefly, uh, we can show you the chart of uh, our company. At this moment, at this moment, we are, we are so young, we are grown up. We are only a few people, about 20 people, but uh, now the recruiting process is opened, yeah? and I hope uh, the family will be increased so soon. I'll show you our technical capacity and break cases. Okay, you know, uh, we have the experience in, uh, of course, not in all these plants, but some of them, but we would like to show you now the current situation more or less. These data were got from the uh, Protermo Solar website yesterday. I guess it, would, it must be updated, okay? It's a serious website. And uh, we would like to show you now the current situation. You know, we have 50 plants operating in Spain, okay? All in Spain. 24 plants operating all around the world, mainly, mainly built by Spanish technology, and 19 new plants in construction in the world. I would like to show an overview of the situation because it is quite interesting, you know. During these two days, hmm, we spoke about different kind of thermosolar power plants. We are not going to get into details of everyone, but I want to show you most, most plants are equipped with thermal storage. Hmm. So, this can give you an idea how important it is to have a thermal storage. Your plant will be just enabled, so you will be able to produce power full during the day and during the night. Huh? I don't know the Chinese market. I don't know if you will sell the uh, kilowatts per hour in a spot market or in a plain uh, tariff. But anyway, in both cases, I think the, the plants built with thermal storage are so important at this moment. Okay, these are in Spain. Okay. But the situation is so similar all around the world. You can see here most of them, well, some of them are not equipped with thermal storage, but as example, all the plants now made in South Africa are equipped with uh, thermal storage, not only by aqua power, but by Avengoa or Cobra. Mm -hmm. Uh, most projects in Morocco are equipped with thermal storage, so I guess this is a good idea for, for you. You can have a, an image, okay? You can see the power technology storage that uh, some of them are not equipped, but most of them are equipped with molten salts. This uh, this data can be consulted, as I told you, in the website protermosolar.com. Okay. Well, if you want, uh, you can surf in this. These are our websites. Okay. Now, what can we do? 
we can help you to with the optical design, solar field layout, control mode, installation, commissioning of solar system concentrators, and total stats, commissioning of a full solar field, and of course, a O&M training of a solar field operators, people, very important, okay? Now, mm, we will get into more details about, because I want to, I would like to explain you some aspects of the solar field. Mm. These days, we listened to different speakers, all of them are so right. Yeah. I could listen uh, a very important, big, uh, very important uh, reasons to select this uh, technology or this technology or another technology. Mm. I guess all of them are good, quite good, good enough, but we must consider different aspects and we cannot, uh, we cannot jump into the pool eh, if, do, if we don't know if the pool is full of water or not. This is very important. We must know what kind of solar field we need, okay? We've been working in various thermal solar power plants, especially in parabolic film technology. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, we have uh, experience in erection, commission and maintenance. Uh, we know different technologies and manufacturers, some kind of concentrated solar tower application experience, of course, and uh, these are the most uh, uh, thermosolar power plants we know, okay? All of them in Spain, but the last one in, uh, in South Africa, okay? Well, we also know a little bit of uh, solar in Spain and uh, key projects in South Africa, okay? They are not mentioned here. I can mention it to you. What do we think about the solar field? Okay, for me, uh, the solar field is one of the most, most important uh, parts of the, uh, the thermal solar power plant, okay? Even for me, the most important one. I will tell you why. Everybody thinks the steam turbine is the heart of the plant. Of course, I agree 100%. But we must think we get the power for the, from the sun. If we don't have a good solar field, we will we will suffer different <coughs> problems. Not only in efficiency, but uh, we will also suffer uh, operating and uh, maintaining problems. Okay. That's why we must pay special attention to the design of the solar field. Okay. And uh, nowadays, it's a weakness point in the plant. Mm -hmm. uh, you know these uh, technologies, all these technologies, uh, thermal solar applications, are quite young. Mm -hmm. They are not so mature, and uh, we can we can see the same problems repeated in different power plants. Why? Because we always make the same mistakes, copy and paste, and don't pay attention to what we are going to build. We are going to uh, operate and maintain. Okay. As example, in uh, parabolic through technology, mm -hmm. we must consider we will have kilometers and kilometers uh, of piping works. Okay, not only absorber tubes, but uh, uh, made of stainless steel. You know, but also uh, carbon steel piping works, and uh, as well as sometimes flexible hoses. Mm -hmm. This can be cause of different kind of problems. Mm -hmm. We will also have a, some kind of swivel joints, which are so weakness for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, a, it's a very, very big surface with a very big amount of HDF through the, all the piping works. And, uh, I guess all oh, many plants you're going to build in China are going to be placed in very cold uh, places. So we must take care of that. We must pay attention uh, to these low temperatures and we must preserve a uh, solar field from uh, frozen, okay? By the other hand, it's uh, the, the problem of the focusing. 
very, very, very special in the concentrated tower technology. Mm -hmm. I think this uh, this problem is better solved in the, the parabolic through technology, but uh, I think there is something uh, something more to do in the concentrated tower. Okay, so a good control of the solar field will give you uh, not only a good efficiency, good uh, temperature results in your HDF, but a good protection for your solar field, okay? And of course, very important, very important, uh, not only not only in the parabolic through, but in the concentrating tower, the safety is very important, and the environment, okay? So, solar fields must be very well protected, okay? The parabolic through technology especially because you know we have a, a fluid HDF which uh, we must avoid to put it on the ground, okay? And to get in contact with people or the environment, okay? How are we going to act? How are we going to move the solar field? Okay, you know there are different devices. Okay, most common use now are the hydraulic devices, hydraulic systems. Mm -hmm. But uh, we can also use uh, some kind of gearboxes. For me, this is a very interesting point, uh, especially in cold areas. Well, not cold, but cold and hot. When you have different, a very big uh, difference of temperature from summer to winter, because you know the viscosity and the density of the oil will be changed, and uh, this can cause several problems in actuators, in hydraulic actuators. So, if I have to decide a, another actuator, I would consider a gearbox and a motor, and furthermore, in the hydraulic devices you have the a oil tank, filter, a high pressure pump, motor, sun, solenoid valves, flexible hoses, connections, two cylinders. I think we have so many chances, so many chances to have a failure. And in fact, they happen, okay? The, the regulation and the position detector are the most important thing in the, maybe the, in the control of the solar field because you must know perfectly exactly the position of your uh, parabolic through collectors or your uh, aerostats and control the temperature of the fluid in the case of HDF perfectly, okay? About the uh, structures, okay. You will see you have different kind of structures yeah, in parabolic through and different kind of uh, uh, assemblies for the uh, aerostats, but we must consider something. Yes, of course, we want, we would like to have a, a strong structures, but uh, they must uh, they must be light, not so heavy. Okay. We must warrant the circulation of the circulation of the HTF in this parabolic through, of course, especially during nights and cold seasons, uh, to protect the, the HTF itself frozen, good protection systems, and uh, of course, moving parts must be very well cared and must be very well selected. Take care with flex ho flexible hoses, swivel joints, etc. Of course, systems can fail, can fail, and they fail, in fact, okay? What I want to tell you is, and this is not only for the solar field, but for the, for your whole plant, okay? You must consider several things, okay? If you want to have a, a good plant, good results, and uh, to avoid any kind of uh, economic or uh, money losses, okay? You must select your materials and your system properly. This can only be made if you know very well the conditions. Sometimes, sometimes, uh, the, engineering, <coughs> the engineering doesn't select the conditions correctly. They take the standards, the ISO, and they say, okay, now for a temperature of 35 degrees and a pressure and the 
altitude and these are the conditions and the plant will be designed according to these conditions. No, 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 no. Every plant has its own conditions. It's not the same to build a plant uh, near the Gobi Desert or near uh, the Kalahari Desert than in Spain. We must have different, different considerations, okay? Because we are going to have different environmental parameters, okay? Then, according to that, we must select uh, the correct equipment, the correct uh, devices, okay? If you allow me a piece of advice, okay? Sometimes we have a session, we are obsessed to save money at the beginning of the project, okay? And uh, we can fall in the risk to build a low-cost plant. Well, the problems start exactly in this point. And the problems will continue in the second phase, which is the commissioning. The commissioning will be the future life of your plant. If you do the good commissioning, you will enjoy a good plant for the 25 or 30 or 35 years, uh, which was initially designed. Otherwise, if you erect a low-cost plant and you do a bad commissioning, you will suffer a lot with the operation and the maintenance. We must always think in the future. We must always think in the operation and maintenance. We must warrant our people in the plant, we will operate the plant and, we, and maintain it in the best conditions. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they will suffer a lot and the, the money you save at the beginning of the project, eh, you will waste uh, 10 times more during the life of the plant. Okay? You can see as example, for, this is just for mm -hmm. your information, the three uh, most uh, common uh, uh, solar collector assemblies used for parabolic fuel. Now, in these moments, it seems, uh, now this is the most used. The torque tube design, this is the most common in thermosolar power plants. Oh, well. And uh, before this, I would like to tell you some more considerations, okay? During commissioning, during commissioning, it's very important to do our jobs, our tasks very well. I mean, if we selected with materi uh, good materials for the direction and they were properly stalled, and uh, we are sure, we are sure the solar field is very, very, very well uh, built, constructed, okay. Now, the next step to have a good plant is a good commissioning. We must, we must clean very well the, all the piping works. Mm -hmm. Flashing, uh, big launcher, etc. Blow them, uh, take a well, any kind of humidity. Uh, maybe, maybe, uh, we need to, we will need during construction to have a decision if we are going to do a pneumatic tests, take care if you do them, or hydraulic tests. If you do hydraulic test, take care what are you going to use, because uh, in the solar field, parabolic through technology, you have a stainless steel and carbon steel uh, at the same time. So, if you use demi water, it's not good. But if you use uh, fresh water, it's not good either. So, think what are you going to use. It is very important to do a good uh, SCA alignment, okay? The alignment of the of solar collector assemblies in the in parabolic through or in the uh, concentrating tower of the mirrors, the heliostats. It's very important in the case of the 
parabolic through technology. The solar field was, must be very well balanced. All the loops must have exactly the same flow through them, okay? The DCS must be strong enough and uh, it, must be, uh, it must be fast enough to manage all the big amount of different devices we have in the solar fields. Solar fields are, are really big and this DCS receive a lot of signals. So it must be able to manage all of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would like to uh, tell you some another some very important consideration when uh, you design the solar field. This morning we could listen to different speakers, and uh, I also asked a question about the size of the uh, heliostats. Okay. When the, when you design the solar field, you must consider something very important. The DCS must manage a lot of, uh, as I told you, a lot of information. Mm -hmm. The delays due to the distances can be can be important. something very important. We work in a thermosolar power plant and parasitics, I mean self-consumption, are so important. Okay? Uh, only for your uh, information, in a 50 megavolts thermosolar power plant uh, cooled by water with cooling, uh, water cooling systems, the self-consumption, the parasitics, represent about 10% uh, of the total power, which means 5 megavolts are self-consumption, are parasitics, okay? We must consider this in the solar field, because in the solar field we have a lot of devices. So, if we increase so much the number of them, we will have more consumption. But at the same time, maybe if we make uh, big structures, or big, uh, uh, with big actuators, the consumptions can be increased. So, we must take care, we must consider this aspect too, okay? Uh, I would like to show you a video, but uh, it seems it's not working. No, thank you very much. Okay, and uh, well, now I would like to introduce this uh, what I call the company star, our product, which is Sunsail. I cannot get into so many details because this is being developed. Eh? As I told you, it's a new technology, nothing to see with a, a parabolic through or concentrating solar tower. Mm -hmm. But uh, I trust in it because it can have 
uh, many different applications. Uh, it can be suitable to be used for uh, writing cycle, stealing cycle, to heat it up, different uh, fluids, uh, in industrial processes, chemical, so many different things, okay? And these are only a few data, just to give you an idea of how big is this, okay? The unit collector area is uh, 800 square meter, with that uh, mirror reflectivity, uh, 92%. The efficiency of the receiver is using air instead of HTF. This is very important. We can take it away, so and air is clean, HTF is not. 80%. Yeah. Um, if, uh, in case of the hotel profit, the efficiency is 99%, very good. And uh, again, we eliminate with risk the HTF. And the uh, steam generator efficiency is about 95.7%. So the total efficiency of the sunsail is, if you make all the, you multiply it all the factors, is the global one is 74.1. So you can see it is uh, big enough, okay? And the unit heat of output this moment is 592.7, okay? As I told you at the beginning of the presentation, and we got the compromise to have it, the, the, the model, the first model, will be ready for next year, okay? So, let's see. We have very good expectations from it, okay? The applications. Ranking, right on the studio cycle, mm -hmm. high temperature in terms of chemistry, and uh, in parabolic through systems, we can increase the temperature helped by the sun cell to 560 degrees. You know it's TF is limited to 400 degrees. And now, using air uh, in the sun cell application, we will increase the temperature to 560 degrees, okay? Of course, solar cogeneration and uh, large scale is the storage. So, you can see it's quite useful. It will be quite useful when it is uh, made, of course. Now it's not. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your patience mm -hmm. to listen to me.